Hello and welcome. My name is Benoit Paliquin, and I'm the founder and one of the portfolio managers here at Exponent Investment Management. And here's a short video on the highlights of what happened in the second quarter of 2020 in the markets and how they affected your portfolio. Thank you for watching and let's get started. So let's look at the markets quickly here. Um, as historic as the downdraft in the first quarter of 28, uh, 2020, the bounce back has been equally as violent. The markets are still negative. So we were up 17% um, so far this, this quarter or in the second quarter of 2020. We're still negative on the year and we're still negative on the 12 months here in Canada. The real story in the markets globally has been how well the technology sector has done. 26% in Canadian dollar terms this so far this or in, in the second quarter of 2020, 17% so far this year, and up 30% year on year. Europe and, and uh, the emerging markets are very similar to Canada's performance. The, not much to say about the Canadian dollar. The oil price down significantly, almost 30% from uh, the close of December of 2019. Real, the real story has been how it traded negatively for a few days. Really, the negative print or the, the real low should be considered $12 or $15 because the negative print on the oil price was a technical glitch, really, that has since been fixed. The VIX, important to note, it's still 30, which is considered elevated. Average is 15, which is a normal level. So VIX is the expectation on the part of investors for volatility in the next 30 days. So when it's elevated, investors are expecting for some downdrafts or some uh, turbulence, but it's interesting that the markets are still quite high. Normally you see high VIX, low markets, low VIX, high markets. The other story, low rates in Canada and US, half a percent. Um, can I interest you in a bond for the next 10 years? And all that you will earn is half a percent. And so that's good for stocks because eventually as the fear subsides, investors will have to move to stocks simply because the rates of returns on bonds are um, pretty crummy. The other story is that the negative or, or inverted yield curve that we saw um, last year is uh, no longer with us. So the narrative in Canada, low interest rates, oil prices have bounced back, uh, but are still quite low. Public health, health efforts to get in front of this pandemic has largely been successful. Um, other efforts on the part of the governments have been interventions around um, wage subsidies, um, helicopter money, if you will, or, or unemployment um, benefits, that famous $2,000 or infamous $2,000 a month, um, rent sub, uh, commercial rent subsidies, and a whole host of other uh, lesser known measures. The idea was to have the, continue, the economy still turn over during as it is being shuttered, if you will. In the US, Initial hotspots, so if you rank in New York City and, and um, the Washington states were the initial hotspots, they're under control, really thanks to a lockdown. Uh, regional reopening, we're starting to see that. Uh, some sectors of uh, we're seeing hotspots come back to life as well. Um, obviously, Florida at the time of this recording and the southwest of the U.S. One would argue those sectors really were never under severe lockdown. It's not the point of this uh, video to make that judgment, but let's just agree that um, there are new hotspots in the US. And there's also ra racial tension that is always semi-permanent or present in the US landscape, political landscape, but really flared up um, this quarter. It, globally, the Europe, re US, the Europe reopened, I'm sorry, um, back online. Uh, tourism is, is now even uh, back on. Asia reopened as well, but the first battle, uh, so we can say that those two uh, jurisdictions or, or regions of the world really won the first battle against COVID. Unfortunately, South America, the Middle East and Africa are still very much under siege. Another concept, important concept to understand for this quarter is the sheer concentration of technology in terms of the index. So this is a chart where the five largest companies since 1990 Right now, we're well, we're, you know, 17 and percent, all in technology names in the S&P 500. Never seen that anything this high. It's actually higher than the uh, peak of the technology boom of the early 2000s. And even then, you, you had two non-technology name makeup um, 
the five, the top five, if you will. Here we have five for five. Um, so if you have got a broadly diversified portfolio, whether it's managed by exponent or not, it's nearly impossible to keep up uh, as most portfolio managers would not put, say, 25% in technology. Let's look at valuations. Uh, this is a new chart for us. Uh, what we're looking at is investor expectations. So we're looking at what investors are expecting in terms of earnings. This is all from Bloomberg. We've got um, back in January, expect investor expectations was $1,100. That got cut quickly uh, within the span of six months, basically um, a little over, uh, basically a 40% haircut. Valuations, we're at 19 times forward earnings. It's been as high as 24, as low as 12. That low point really was because earnings had not been cut earnings expectations are late to get, move up and they're late to move down. You've got an earnings yield, which is a new feature, uh, which is effectively the reverse of the PE. What we're trying to do here is trying to ascertain or compare what investors are locking in. So if you buy the, S the if you had bought the TSX at the end of the quarter, you were locking and assuming the earnings were $623, you were locking in 5.24% in terms of earnings uh, or or yield, if you will, on the earnings side. And if you buy a 10-year bond, you're locking in 52 basis points. So clearly, stocks are still um, attractive when compared to bonds. On a valuation perspective, a high-low, we're still, you know, um, it's a fairly low valuation or low earnings yield, which means a fairly high valuation. So this number and this number are kind of the reverse or they are not kind of the reverse, they are the reverse. In the, in the, on the US side, well, different story. We're basically at highs in terms of valuations. We are near lows in terms of uh, earnings expectations, which is interesting. Our previous year video from last quarter, we said we were expecting $125 in terms of earnings. That's really what the current expectation is. We And that's down from 175 in January or pre-COVID. The earnings yield, no question. It is high. It's making basically, or I say, I should say, it's a new low. Um, the new low was January of 2018, and we're now at 405. Compared to bonds, <clears throat> still a good deal, but um, expensive nonetheless. So the lessons of this quarter: well, binary versus thinking and probabilities. Well, what does that mean? The media. And the narrative in, in terms of COVID is really presented to us in a binary outcome. It's right or it's wrong. It's on or it's off. It's green or it's red. Investing and science and, and real life is really more improbabilistic. We don't know what will happen, but we can have a pretty good idea of what the potential um, scenarios could look like. And so that's a lesson really out of the first quarter. So if I would have told you at the end of last quarter that the markets was gonna rally like it had and that the earnings were gonna rally like they have, most of uh, most of you would probably thought I was completely off my rocker. So it's really, it was a probability, but it certainly was one of many probabilities. So rather than thinking binary, you wanna think in probabilities. Experts are learning on the fly, and that's really important to remember and respect. Science is constantly evolving. So what we knew about the disease and how it spread and the impact on the, and the impact on uh, human life, if you will, um, is constantly evolving. The same with the vaccine. And so investors react to the different news flow coming out of science. When, for instance, when there's good news on the vaccine, the market sells up or goes up. Uh, certain sectors sell off while others are bid up. Governments, I think for Canada, we can we certainly give them a, a great uh, or a good grade. They've done a good job in case in point. Um, COVID infections are, are quite low. However, they're not the engine of forward thinking. So many investors are, are looking to government and, and many citizens are looking to government to solve a lot of the, of the current crisis all the way through. What governments do well is sort of put a fire out, but they're really not forward thinking of how to solve a problem. And that's just the normal course of action. It was like that pre-COVID, it's gonna be like that after COVID. 
Um, politicians, there's a saying as a, in politics, you never want to waste a crisis. So the downside, again, as an investor, you want to check your politics or your political views at the door and but, and, and, but still follow the political narrative. You want to understand what is political noise, if you will, and what is true uh, information that you can um, incorporate into your investment thesis. Some trends will, and that's where most of our work are, is being done currently, some trends will accelerate and existed before crisis, before COVID. So work from home, uh, takeout, um, Uber Eats, that sort of thing, that certainly was existed pre-COVID and has really taken off since then. Other sectors that were really hot pre-COVID, which would be cruising, uh, travel, international travel, air, air travel was at all time high pre-COVID. Those are obviously paused. And so it'll be interesting to see which sales are, are, will never come back, which sector will never come back, and which sales are actually, you're, you're, you're seeing a pent up demand. Um, so that's really where most of our work is, is, is focused right now on the research side. Strong gets stronger, the strong also, also politically get, get um, criticized for it. And that's been like this forever, great companies, take advantage of the weaker competitive landscape in a pandemic or in a crisis and uh, leap off from there. The weak, they simply get killed off, but they were weak going into a crisis. A great example would be department stores. They weren't doing so well going into the crisis. The crisis simply accelerated um, the demise of many de department stores or retail stores. Torque works both ways. So obviously if you're positioning yourself to one or two outcomes and it doesn't happen, your sector can sell off and, and you're gonna suffer some great pain. But if you get it right, you'll make lots of money. So that's gonna be a subject in another video, I think, but that's certainly one of the lessons of the quarter. Some sectors really torqued up and others um, were slower or even fell um, significantly. So strategic outcomes, this is, are the three or four strategic outcomes we're working with. Number one, <clears throat> and some people will fight us on this and, and we have to be open-minded to, uh, to any possible outcome. One, science wins by Christmas. Vaccines come on, economy roars back. 2020 it was just a bad dream. Number two, which I think is the most, we're working with the most likely scenario, which is science adapts. We learn how to manage the new reality. Eventually, 24 to 36 months, we have a vaccine which is fully distributed. Basically, we got out in front of this pandemic. Um, and science and biology really eventually wins. But in the meantime, we have flare ups and we need to adjust and close down and that sort of thing. Um, number three, which is COVID is with us for the foreseeable future. Bearish scenario, certainly. Um, and we're just going to have to learn with it and adapt. From a biology perspective, HIV is a virus and does not have a vaccine, but we've learned to adapt and, and science has developed some, some therapeutics around it where HIV is no longer a death sentence as it was um, when it first um, became part of, of our biology landscape. Arts are new normal, it's, it's clumsy. Um, the other one, and it, it, you could combine one of these with the unknown unknowns, which is we obviously have a US election coming down. We have geopolitical strife. We have lots of things that could go wrong, that may go wrong. So we have to be ready for them. In terms of portfolio constructions, well, in scenario number one, you want some exposure to oil and gas, maybe commercial real estate, travel and leisure, live entertainment. Those will deal well when the economy reopens. The faster it reopens, the more of a surprise it is, the more torque you will have out of those names. Scenario number two, healthcare and pharmaceutical, a lot of money, a lot of attention around uh, vaccines, technology, technology names, we're seeing that right now in the markets, consumer discretionary, um, a, a whole host of sectors will do well continue to do well in the second scenario. And scenario number three, there will be some sectors that will do well under a um, you know COVID with us forever type of scenario, consumer staples, fruit production, and eventually the rest of the sectors will adapt as well. Scenario number four, you want some cash, you want some bonds, quality and liquid stocks, which will allow you to make some changes to your portfolio. 
that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want, if you want to watch the longer video, by all means, um, if you have any questions or comments, shoot us an email and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you so much for watching. I am Benoit Paliquet from Exponent Investment Management.